Hello, Mr. Zonker here, and this video is on types of sequences. Let's get to it. Our first type of sequence is an arithmetic sequence. In these sequences, terms in the sequence have a common difference, and that common difference is basically a number that we're adding to the last number to get the next term. We also know that arithmetic sequences are linear. Here's an example of the sequence. One, four, seven, 10. And if you were looking for a pattern here, you might notice that the common difference is three. That means we do one plus three is four. Four plus three is seven. Seven plus three is 10, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, on a table, this looks a lot like our linear tables that we've been dealing with. Here we've got plus three, plus three, plus three. Uh, and we could see that this is kind of our common difference is kind of like our slope in this case. Uh, and here we have term one is one, term two is four, term three is seven, term four is 10. That's how we write our sequences. The first value or the X, in this case it's a function N, is the term number. And then our y value, or our actual sequence number, t of n in this case, is 1, 4, 7, 10, the numbers of a sequence. Like we said, if we graph this, this makes a linear graph. Uh, we can see adding 3 to the y value each time x increases. In a geometric sequence, the terms in the sequence have a common ratio. And this common ratio is basically what number is multiplying to the previous term to get the next one. And this relationship is exponential. Here we have a, a sequence, 3, 6, 12, 24. You might notice that the common ratio is 2. That means we multiply 2 to the last number. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. That's our common ratio. A table. Same thing, our first number in the sequence is 3, second number is 6, third number is 12, and we can see that uh, each time we are multiplying by 2. 3 times 2, 6 times 2, uh, etc., etc. An exponential graph, kind of like we've covered a bit in class, is going to be this curve. It's not going to be linear, it's going to curve up pretty quickly, and whenever we have a common ratio in a sequence, we're gonna get that curve. Now exponentials can grow or they could shrink. In this case, it's growing. Now when we're dealing with sequences, you might have noticed that we end up with these dots that have gaps in between. We call this a discrete graph. And oftentimes with sequences, in our domain, we only have specific numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't have the in-between values. A continuous graph, however, does not have any gaps. From one point to the next, it just goes straight through. We know something's discrete when we see individual points. Continuous means that we have values all throughout the whole graph. Our last type of sequence is a recursive sequence, and these can actually be arithmetic, geometric, or something else. What makes it recursive is that we find the next term by substituting in previous terms. And we usually need to know one term, and, and usually that's the starting one. Let's take a look at our example here. We have t of n plus 1 equals t of n minus 4. They're telling us t of 0 equals 34. That's like our starting point is 34. And this seems kind of confusing, but we're going to see how this actually works. If we wanted to find t of 1, that would be 0 plus 1 which means we have t of 0 minus 4. t of, if we plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. That equals t of n, which is 0, minus 4. And basically what we're doing is taking this t of 0 and substituting it in for t of 0 here. 34 minus 4 is 30. So t of 1 equals 30. Next, if we want to find t of 2, our second term, that would be 1 plus 1 is 2. Then we have t of 1 minus 4. So we'll take this 30 and substitute it in for the t of 1, giving us 30 minus 4, which is 26. So t of 2 is 26. t of 3, we would do the same thing. We have 26. We plug that in for t of 2. That's 26 minus 4, which is 22. t of 4, same thing. We take that 22, 
substituted in for the t of 3 the previous term, 22 minus 4 is 18. And that's why we call it recursive, because it kind of feeds into, an, into itself. To find the next term, t of 1, we have to plug in t of 0. To find t of 2, we plug in t of 1. t of 3, plug in uh, t of 2, etc., etc. So the recursive sequence, as long as we know at least one starting point, we can use that to generate the next terms uh, in the sequence. All right, I hope this video was helpful.